Hello, my name is Jan Nottelman. I'm the CTO of ID Advance. This is uh, a presentation of our sensorless power seat controller. Uh, it's a controller that we built to demonstrate uh, the performance of our um, sensorless motion technology, which we call DCM motion technology, uh, for detection, control, and monitoring of brushed DC motors. What we have here is a motor with an actuator and you can see there's a scale on here so we can see where the actuator is. The motor is a normal uh, seat motor from a car and uh, this is connected, the power wires are connected to a, uh, our controller box here which uh, contains a small detection circuit to detect the voltage transients uh, every time the motor here commutates. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the motor is an 8-slot motor, uh, which means that we will have generated 8 voltage transients per revolution of the motor. Uh, to compare the signals we detect and control, used for controlling, we have also, the motor also has a hall sensor built in, and that's fed into the controller here, and uh, we only use this as a reference signal. Further, the box here, of course, contains then a microcontroller that controls the, uh, the power circuit for the motor. Um, and on the screen, uh, which is a, a PC program we developed for this demonstration, um, you can see here that we first need to go in and uh, calibrate the system. Obviously, the system needs to know where the zero point is uh, for all further movements. So we go in to calibrate and then press start calibration and what you will see when I press start here is that the motor will go back to the end point and then a little bit forward again to the zero point. There we go and it's at the zero point. Now we go back on the screen into actuator control we have two modes implemented. We have what we call a counting demo, which basically means that we can move this cursor at the top to a desired position, and then when we press go, the motor should move to that position set. You can see here out to the right that we have the position uh, calculated in millimeter, and of course that should correspond to the physical position you see on the actuator slide, and also what we're really using here for counting are what we call transients, namely the voltage transients generated uh, when the motor rotates, and we have also the Hall reference. Uh, the Hall only gives two pulses per revolution of the motor, and compared that to the eight pulses from the transients, it means that we will only have a fourth of the uh, Hall reference counts per transient. Uh, let's try to move the cursor here into a desired position. We move it forward to 1000 transients, which corresponds to 10 millimeters. And then we try to press go. And if you look at the motor, it should move now forward. In the meantime, it counts down here, the, uh, the position. And you can see there's one count too much here, but uh, since the accuracy of this system is plus minus uh, a half transient, uh, then that's acceptable. Let's try give it another go up to 2000 transients and press go again. And it ends at 2001. Let's now go back to the zero position just to verify that it can find the zero position. There we go. And again, here we can see that the Hall reference is also, of course, plus minus a half count in accuracy, indicated here as minus one. Now let's go into the seat control mode. Uh, what we try to implement here is a rather realistic controller for our seat in a car. So we have down here a forward and a backward uh, button. So let's try to move the motor forward. So I just hold it down with the cursor and move it forward to an arbitrary position. Uh, and what we want to do here is to say, okay, this is our preferred seat position. So we store that position. Then another person comes into the car, 
wants to move the seat a bit more forward, so you press the button. Um, and then that's his preferred position. Then the first person comes back, of course, wants to have his preferred position, and we press then the recall, and hopefully the motor will go back to the stored position. And you can see it's very accurate. In fact, the accuracy uh, with the gearing of this motor and the spindle actuator uh, and uh, with the eight uh, commutation uh, tangents we have per revolution means that we have on this system an accuracy of one hundredth of a millimeter measured on the actuator. Let's just finally um, show that we are not cheating. Uh, we, you can see the whole reference was always counting. Uh, let's try to move forward and then remove the uh, hall input from the and you can see now that the hall reference is no longer counting everything here is done based on calculation as transients let's just do a final recall it goes back to exactly the, pos the position that is stored. Thank you very much and if you want to learn more about our sensorless detection method please go to our website www.ideadvance.com. Thank you very much.